Your Coca-Cola bottler presents Claudia, based on the famous play and novels by Rose Franken. Brought to you transcribed Monday through Friday by your friendly neighbor who bottles Coca-Cola. Relax, and while you're listening, refresh yourself. Have a Coke. And now, Claudia. La, 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 la. Why is Mama so happy today, do you think? Mm, she's glad to see me go, aren't you, Mother? Delighted. That's why I'm humming. Mama hums, but I mourn. I hate to see you go. Now, my humming and mourning damsel, if you kindly step aside to one side, I'll get into my car, and off, like a breeze through the morning glories, zip to the station I will drive. What if I won't? Step aside kindly, please. I shall lift you up kindly, please, and put you down aside. Mmm, sounds like fun. David, don't you dare pick her up. You'll hurt yourself. What about hurting me? You, it doesn't matter. Oh, sweet, sweet. I have my orders. My orders from headquarters, Claudia. So kindly step aside of your own volition. You're cluttering up the driveway. For no reason I can think of, my own volition hates to see you go off to New York this morning, darling. Mm, I hate to go, too. Just look at this place. Beautiful. Mm. Such a nice, sunny Tuesday morning. I wish I could think of a reason for you not to go, but I can't. Five more minutes, and you won't have to think of a reason. You'll miss your train. (laughs) Are you wishful thinking, too? (laughs) Or just warning, Mama? Just warning. Oh, you have no soul. Now, Mama's right. Now, Now, out of my way. Let me get into my car. Listen to him. My car. It's my car, too. All right, anything. Let me get into your car. Our car. Claudia's (laughs) splitting possessives this morning. She's getting to be quite a grammarian, isn't she? I am. That's nice. What's a grammarian? A grammarian is the first cousin to a vegetarian. Oh, sounds awful. Now, tonight when I come home, I'll give you a blow-by-blow description of it. Tonight, hmm? I can't wait, I can't wait. Goodbye. Tell me now. As they say in Guatemala, goodbye. I will never talk to you again if you don't tell me now. Good. And as they say in Gitche Gumi, goodbye. Goodbye. Ah, now we're getting someplace. I'm getting to the station. Hooray! See you tonight. Same time, same place. And now, as they say in Eastbrook, Connecticut, good bye. Why is it I've got a feeling I'm going to be lonesome for you all day today? Mm, probably because you're about to become a mother. Well, I thought feelings like this were only felt months ago. Oh, you, you, you're you retarded. And glad of it. <laughs> well, be off with you. Make your million dollars. See if I care. I'm only going to make one million. Is that all? Mm-hmm. Oh, well, tomorrow you can make another million. I miss you too, darling. Well, I should hope so. Drive carefully. Yes, ma'am. And don't jump on or off trains or anything else moving. No, ma'am. Mm. Now, lean in that window and... What? David, that's the phone. You don't say. I do, mm. I do say. Well, darling, don't you even want to know who it is before you leave? Mm, not particularly. But may- maybe it's for you. I doubt it. Anyway, if you look down the road, you will see that I have gone. But, darling, even if it's for me, don't you have any curiosity? For you, none at all, no. Oh, you're so stuffy. Me, stuffy? Not at all. I'm just virtuous. Humph. Humph? Yes, humph. Well, what about answering the telephone? Oh, Mama will. She's inside. The way that you treat that mother of yours. She loves it. Now... Get your hands off the car. You'll have to dent the fenders, Claudia. <laughs> Once Not and for all, it. goodbye. <laughs> goodbye. Oh, David, telephone for you. Oh, <laughs> no, aren't you glad I didn't let you go? No. Mama, Mama, I am wet. You am? Such mm. English, David, answer that phone. It'll only take you a second. You know, this is all a plot to make me miss my train. Of course it is. <laughs> Why can't you cooperate and make it easier for me? If I didn't know you better... I'd believe you. All right, go on, go on, go on. You're not here anymore, Git. Shall I tell them you've gone, David? Go on, make a liar of your one and only mother-in-law. All right, Mother, I'll answer it. But I'm doing it for you. Just for you, not for Claudia. You bluffer, you. Me? Yes, you. You're just as curious as the rest of us. Who do you suppose it is at eight in the morning? Well, whoever it is, it's going to be short, to the point... And very sweet. At least be polite now, polite. It's a woman, David. Of course. Only a woman would call a man as he's leaving for the station. Anybody Sometimes knows that. Sometimes you are so intelligent. Isn't he, Mama? I think so. Oh. Mm. Hello. Yes. Who is yes, it? this is Mr. Norton speaking. Who is it? Yes. Yes, it's David Norton. That's right. Who's he? Oh. Well, look, now, I'm the only one, and, I, and I'm in a hurry. I've got to get... 
Oh, 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 Western Union. Western Union, Mom, it's a telegram. I can hear as well as you can. I wonder who yes. you know would send us a telegram. Yes, I'm listening. Go ahead. How do you expect David to find out? Shh. Hmm. Yes. Yes, I've got that. David, can't you at least repeat it as she goes along? I'm bursting. Yes. Oh, you're the most irritating man. Yes. That's all? All right, thank you, Western Union. David, what's it all about? Do I have to worry? Is everything all right? No, you needn't bother to send a copy. I've got it. Nothing's wrong with anybody, is it? Tell me. Goodbye, Western Union. Well? Well? <laughs> well? <laughs> you two women. You look like pointing beagles, nose quivering and ears cocked. I hate you. My sentiments exactly, Claudia. All right, all right. I'll relent. It was from Julia and Hartley. From Julia and Hartley? Mm -hmm. Hartley is David's brother, Mama. I know. And Julia is Hartley's wife, Mama. Oh, I you. know that, too, David. Go on. Where'd they wire from? From England? From the boat. From the boat? From the boat. Oh, from the boat. Little Miss Echo, how do you do? Then they must be on their way home. Exactly. Mm. Well, when do they get here? At noon. Today? Today. Oh. Well, that was a little like pulling teeth, but now we know, Claudia. Little boys must have their fun, Mama. And now that everybody in the world knows what everybody else knows, I'm off to the station. David, you can't just, just, just go off like that. Yes, 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 like what? <laughs> Hartley and Julia are docking at noon today. We've got to plan. We've got to plan. We've got to plan. Plan. Yes, little Sir Echo, how we are going to meet them. Oh, oh. Are you hinting that you're going to be standing at the dock waving them in? Of course, Hartley's your only brother, isn't he? Darling, I don't think Julia and Hartley expect you to meet them. It's such a commotion. And Julia. why did they send us the cable? Oh, just to be nice. Partly because I'm Hartley's only brother. Then I think we ought to be nice, too, and meet them. This is proceeding just as I expected it. David, <laughs> how would you feel if you'd been in Europe for, for months and you were arriving today? I'd feel wonderful. Well, so would I, but I'd feel twice as wonderful if I had me to greet me when I arrived. My daughter has conceit, David. <laughs> I don't blame her. Then, David, you agree we ought to be there? Well, of course I'll be there, but I don't cherish the idea of you getting in all those mobs and excitement. Oh, I won't get excited, and I'll stay out of the mobs. That and... I would like to see. Mom, are you coming, too? I am not. Now, wait a minute. I haven't made up my mind yet, darling. Well, I've made up mine. Same thing. More conceit. No, wisdom, Mama. David says yes. Now, you know you're not supposed to be running around oh, all over the place. Oh, who said anything about running around? I'm going to go down to New York with you, then I'll come back from New York with you, and, and then... And in between. In between, nothing. Mm -hmm. Except Julie and Hartley, and if there's time, a double feature while you're working. Mm-hmm. David, you just can't let your only brother be greeted by a mere customs officer. It isn't decent. I told you I'd meet the boat. You are not enough. It needs me, too. What do you think, Mother? I never think when I can help it. Hmm. I'm not a China doll. You're worse than that. You're an incipient mother. David, there's no reason to call me names just because you have no brotherly love. Oh, but I have, darling, a great deal of it. I'll greet Hartley. I, I just happen to have a little more husbandly love, that's all. Oh, darling, that was sweet. There are times, however, when it's right to sacrifice your finer emotions. This and one of them times. Who says it am? And just think, David, just think a ship coming in with seagulls and foghorns and Julia and Hartley. He's my closest relative after Mama and Aunt Louise and you and Shakespeare. And I'm Blanc. not a relative. Well, you're acting like one. Oh, how I'd love to be there. I never could decide what was more exciting, a sailing or an arrival. I've only been to a sailing. I think an arrival's better happier. No goodbyes when you're coming home, just smiles and bouquets. Mama, when did you meet a boat coming into port? Oh, it's a long story. You never told it to me, did you? There was a young man in khaki on the boat. He'd been away in France two years. Yes, Mother? I was almost afraid to go down to the ship. I knew I'd recognize him, no matter what the trenches had done, but I worried whether he'd know me. And then I found myself on the pier, crowds of other women round me. Most of them crying. I remember wondering why. The ship sailed in. Seagulls and tugboats and music and handkerchiefs waving. The rails of the de decks were crowded with uniforms. and All the men looked alike from the distance. I couldn't find the right face. I wanted to run away, but the pier was too crowded, so the boat docked. And then in one moment, the years rolled away. Time was nothing. Two years without my father. But he came home. I haven't thought of it in years. David, 
Your train. I've missed it. It's been nice knowing you, Mrs. Brown. Who cares about a I care. missed train? You'll be late to the office. A fine thing for an architect. Now run along while I make up the marketing list. I don't know what got me into talking all of a sudden. Well, darling? David, sometimes I feel as if I didn't know Mama at all. There are whole years of her life she just carries around by herself. She carries them well, darling. It must be so lonesome. I can't even remember them with her. David, what are you going to do about your train? Oh, not a thing. Take the next one? Nope. You're not going to stay home all day just because you missed a silly train. I won't have it. You won't, eh? No. What's a day, darling? You'll be coming home tonight. Now, let's see. What train? No train. I'm going to drive into New York. Go on. You are? And if I drive in alone... There are going to be an awful lot of empty seats in that car. Oh, such a waste. Mm Mm-hmm. And it doesn't cost any more for two people to use a car than one. Such economy. So, how long will it take you to get ready? No time at all, darling. I'm practically ready now. Mm, That means a half hour. How did I get myself into this? You don't have to pretend. You're glad you did because this is one arrival, one ship coming in when we'll be standing side by side. One memory we can share together. You and Mama... I'm clay in your hands. Huh. Now, get along with you. What a lucky morning. Julia and Hartley coming home. And I don't have to say goodbye to you at the gate. You are, are a spoiled child. I know. The worst part of it is, I love it. Mm-hmm. Dum, 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 dum. La, 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 la. Watch young people preparing to give a party. First thing on the refreshment list is always Coca-Cola. When there's plenty of Coke in the refrigerator at home, they like to ask friends in after school, after a game, or after an evening at the movies. And you like to have them do so, for the home that's full of young people is a friendly place for adults and children both. Well, Joe, I've been took. So you have, David. Mm. I warned you yesterday you'd be took to taking Claudia into New York. That wife of mine and her mother. Between them, a man doesn't have a chance. Do you mind, David? Mm, No, I don't mind. As a matter of fact, I'm very much looking forward to meeting Julia and Hartley at the boat. Yes, it ought to be exciting. Landings always are. If you're around, Joe, will you help me keep an eye on Claudia? You bet I will. But one eye isn't going to be enough. It'll take several once Claudia gets on the pier and learns about customs regulations. Customs regulations? Mm Mm-hmm. I hadn't thought of that. I suggest you keep Claudia away from the customs inspector. I have sort of an idea she won't like his looking through Julia's trunks. Oh, oh, she'll hate it. Any law is resented by my wife. Yes, I'd, I'd better keep them apart. You're absolutely right, Joe. Well, you've got quite a job on your hands, David. Good luck on it. Thanks, and so long. Bye, David. As I was about to say... Every day, Monday through Friday, Claudia comes to you transcribed with the best wishes of your friendly neighbor who bottles Coca-Cola. So listen again tomorrow at the same time. And now this is Joe King saying au revoir. And remember, whoever you are, whatever you do, wherever you may be, when you think of refreshment, think of Coca-Cola. For Coca-Cola makes any pause the pause that refreshes. And ice-cold Coca-Cola is everywhere. This broadcast of Claudia was supervised and directed by William Brown Maloney. And now, here's a word from your friendly neighbor who bottles Coca-Cola.